Pace car is off. IMSA flagman Jim Sidley has the green flag in hand. It waves, and we are underway. Oh, and the Nissan there of Jeff Brab I mean, of uh, Chip Robinson, coming through from the second row and squeeze, trying to squeeze out Wayne Taylor. We have cars side by side as they get down to corner number two. 83 is Jeff Brabham out front. The 84 of Chip Robinson right there has dropped back into fourth position, I make that. Brabham is out front, followed by Wayne Taylor. Then that number 10, the beautifully turned out wins Pontiac Spice with John Paul Jr., the former series champion on board. Now Chip Robinson in the 84 comes around him at the end of the long straightaway. That turbo power of the V6 Nissan there just overwhelming the beauty of the Pontiac power in John Paul Jr.'s car. Up now, front. of course, Jeff Brabham, <coughs> it's going to be, as you've already said, you know, he's got broken ribs, cracked vertebrae, and this is a very bumpy and a very physical circuit. These guys are going to be shifting gears something like 30 times a lap, and a guy that's in pain on a very hot afternoon like today, it's going to be a struggle for him to maintain this pace. The Nissan team has set up a special radio frequency for Jeff Brabham alone to communicate how he is feeling during the race. They have special code words for Jeff to signal if he feels that he needs to come in for a relief driver. They don't want anybody else to know about it. They're on their own frequency today. Right now, on the same frequency with Jeff Brabham is Wayne Taylor in that number 64 Chevy Intrepid. Turned out for the first year at West Palm Beach. Its first race was at West Palm. They have took their first pole and then went on and won their first race at New Orleans. A rain-filled affair, the first Grand Prix du Mardi Gras. Wayne Taylor all over Jeff Brabham. And Chip Robinson is now up into third. Boy, Wayne Taylor is all over Jeff Brabham. <laughs> if he gets, obviously getting that close there with the front of the car tucked right under the Nissan like that, loses all his downforce. There's um, James Weaver in the Dyson Porsche towards the back of the field, not had a good weekend at all. Here's the number 98 of Rocky Moran. They've been having a lot of problem with differentials. They've broken at least three that I know of this weekend. But Rocky Moran says he likes his car as he goes around David Tennyson, the Camel Lights, Denon Ferrari Spice. In fact, rocketing up through the field, of course, Rocky Moran, who had to start at the back of the grid because of the no, no qualifying time. You see all James Weaver's yellow Porsche in there as well. Back up front, the 83 Nissan of Jeff Brabham wearing an aluminum cross-shaped brace on his chest to keep him propped up in his seat. He says when he gets tired, he starts to slouch forward despite the belt, and that's when his back starts to hurt. 64 is second. Look at the gap to the 84 Nissan. Now here comes Juan Fangio. I said Wayne Taylor was a likely spoiler in this championship. So is this man, the nephew of the five-time Formula One world champion Juan Manuel Fangio. You can see the camera is really taking a beating. It is a rough course here in Del Mar. Part of that, of course, is the fact that this, uh, this car has a four-cylinder engine. Obviously, they vibrate naturally, just a little bit more than the sixes or the eights. And uh, it's a very small capacity engine, just 2.3 litre, four-cylinder turbocharged, and does an absolutely astounding job. And every time we go to someone like Watkins Glen or Elkhart Lake with long straights, you think it's going to get blown off, and it hangs right in there. Tremendously powerful little engine. They tweak it via turbocharger boost up to about 125 inches, about three times, for comparison, what Indy cars run at. Juan Fangio. And in fact, he is catching up with Chip Robinson. On the lead, Jeff Brabham with Wayne Taylor still right there. Wayne Taylor running right in the shadow of that Nissan. On a hot afternoon like today in a street circuit like this where cooling is at a premium anyway, both for the engine and the driver, see the long legs of the, of the Nissan there as they accelerate onto this fast sweeping backstretch. <coughs> the power of that V6 turbocharged just overwhelms the normally aspirated V8 Chevrolet.